Swap maps came from a 10 year history of really having a passion for managing fields better. Corey saw that there was so much potential in the variable rate agriculture that wasn't being utilized really, like nobody was doing anything with it. Corey um, realized that if you measured the electrical conductivity, measured the elevations, and combined a bunch of layers, you get a much better zone map. Of course, we were on a shoestring budget. Like it's, it's laughable to think back at what we did back then. In 2008, we bought our first soil mapping machine. At that point, it was a Ferris machine out of Kansas. I still remember it coming into town on a trailer. It's kind of the first one in Saskatchewan. We were taking this big risk, buying this new equipment. And I mean, it took us like two weeks to map our first field and had trouble getting all the RTK system working. And there's lots of challenges back then. It was pretty patched together, but <laughs> it's a... That's what you do at the beginning, because you're only little. Like even in the years when it got really tough, in 2010, for example, we were still new in the mapping and trying to build this business and stuff, and we were just petrified that we'd invested all this money and hired staff and people weren't gonna come, you know, weren't gonna continue it, but we never lost a single customer, right? So it's times like that, that's the tough times when you really see what you have. We've like, kind of always felt like we've got something good. We just have to keep pushing forward. I knew that it was gonna work to some extent. It was just whether or not we could scale it up. So Swap Maps was created because there was no other tool out there that actually built soil water topography into a single map. So not any one of those single layers can really be used on its own because they're all, all those aspects are intertwined. There's a lot of steps. It's a long process. There's many different aspects of it that require specialized software and skills and equipment in the fields and knowledge about what a good map is. And then of course all the, the products that you can build off of that, like once you have a, areas of the field that are gonna respond similarly to um, seed and fertilizer rates and sprays and um, other products that then you can easily treat those areas differently. Sort of scale up the SWAT maps processes so that it could be distributed to the, to the world and the masses. We basically built what we felt was like the perfect product for us. And then that made it a good product to take to everybody else in the market to say, here's a simple way to use a hardware device that also sends data right to the cloud and experts start working on the maps and data right away. People are always gonna be the cornerstone of this business. Even though precision agriculture is into autonomy now, and there's so many ways that things are becoming easier and faster, and there's AI, and we're involved in AI too, that eliminates people. But people are still at the core of everything we do, and I feel like we're very fortunate to have such a great group of people too. I don't think it's fair to have any conversation about crop domestic without talking about like our board of directors and our investors. In two short years and a very short period of time, I feel these people have helped us immensely. But I would say now we feel like we can be the biggest precision services company in the world.